Uh, welcome, Dr. Uh, Radha Murthy and Ms. Nida Bhatt. Am I right? Yeah. Dr. Radha S. Murthy is founder and managing trustee of Nightingales. She won last year's Namai Mangaluru Award in the private individual category for her immense contributions and passion for the elderly. Through 15 years of undetected de dedication and service, Dr. Radha has touched the lives of senior citizens, protected them from abuse, and filled them with joy and care. Welcome, Dr. Radha. Thank you, sir, for having me here in the morning. Thank you. The previous year's Namma Bengaluru Awards. She runs the Children's Movement for Civic Awareness, CMCA, a joint initiative of the Public Affairs Committee and Swabhimana. The CMCA aims to create civic awareness among children. It conducts, it conducts the program in 40 schools through trained volunteers. Civic clubs are formed to promote student participation in civic activities pertaining to issues such as garbage, water conservation, and air pollution. The CMCA believes that children have the potential to be epicenters of change and can influence those who surround them. How does she go about this work? Let us ask her. Welcome, Ms. Bhatt. Thank you. Mrs. Bhatt, Just, what? Uh, one, can I sure, sure, sure. Okay, it's not a joint uh, initiative. Of not uh, 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 yeah. uh, Vrinda Bhatt. What motivated, to join, motivated you to join CNCA? Did some incident in your life force you to look at children as the harbinger, harbingers of change? Well, I must say it was uh, nothing as romantic or exciting as that. It's just that we had organized a cycle rally with the uh, Public Affairs Centre in Swabhimana, where we had about uh, 4,000 children cycling for a clean, green and safe Bangalore. And uh, the sight of that, the children cycling for creating awareness, that struck a chord with Dr. Samuel Paul and others in the organizing uh, group. So we said, OK, why not take this forward? And that's how we had civic summer camps which followed with civic clubs. And I would say it is more the commitment of the founder people, which uh, sort of saw this program flourish and be what it is but today. But you had interest in such things. Yes, I was uh, very interested in making things better in seeing Bangalore transformed into a better place. How exactly does CMC operate to create civic awareness among school students? school students? For many years now, we've operated uh, work through the civic club model, where we have uh, civic clubs in schools. And uh, this deals with children who are in the age group of 12 to 14 years. So every week, our volunteers who are civic tutors, they uh, visit the schools and take up sessions. We have developed the curriculum ourselves. It deals mainly with citizenship education. And now we have expanded. We are present in uh, seven centers. Um, about three of them in Karnataka, Maharashtra too, and Hosur in Tamil Nadu. So th we work through the civic club model, but uh, now we are also into youth and uh, entering the Mrs. rural. Bert, Ms. Bert. Mrs. Bert, Ms. Bert, Ms. Mrs. Bert, Ms. Bert, Ms. Yeah. Bert, whatever it is. Is it just awareness or do these children actively participate in civic programs? Yes, very much. We believe in hands-on. They learn through experience. So they do a lot of campaigns to create awareness. So the children know what it is to run a campaign themselves. They think of it, they think of the idea and then execute it themselves. More than that is the acts of active citizenship which they do. So they know, okay, if you see a tree being cut, if you see an overflowing uh, drain, they know who to call in the local government or in the municipality and then they call up, they are regularly call up the complaint numbers. In fact, their parents have come back and told us how transformed the children are. Apart from, of course, not bursting crackers during Diwali, buying eco-friendly Ganeshas, those are now taken for granted. But it is these acts of active citizenship which uh, delight us and keep us going, I would say. How children have taken the leadership and convince their parents also that, right. yes, we must take action to create a better quality of life for ourselves. Linda, any particular incident where children forced adults to observe civic sense? you remember one particular incident? Um, to observe civic, okay, there are so many right now, Anything I can't think. Because uh, it should inspire our listeners. Okay, but one thing where I can uh, tell you is, 
recently in one of our rural civic clubs uh, because the civic tutor had been talking about the rights of the children and what entitlements they are uh, supposed to get. So notebooks, they are supposed to get free notebooks. And uh, the civic tutor was away. He's a teacher in the school. And the headmaster had uh, uh, charged 10 rupees per child for the notebooks. So when the uh, master came back, the children told him, okay, see, now uh, this is what the principal has done. So he said, okay, you are civic club members. Now what do you do? So you, you are entitled to those notebooks, free of cost. So they went and get out the headmaster and uh, he gave back all the 10 rupees, I mean the 10 rupees he had collected. Yeah, it shows that the children were not scared. Otherwise, you know, children are so scared of the headmaster and uh, they... That is the change you bring about. Yes, where, yes, where we are telling them that it is your right. So you can uh, fight for it and... Thanks, thanks, Brinda. From somebody who is taking care of children to somebody who takes care of the elderly, Dr. Radha Murthy. Dr. Radha Murthy, senior citizens are the most abused in our country. Most often their own children abuse them and leave them to fend for themselves. You have started Nightingales to serve the elderly. What motivated you to start it? As a doctor, actually by profession, I find there are many more number of problems other than just abuse. The, the problems are health problems, emotional problems, psychological problems, financial problems, and abuse, as you already mentioned. So to, to look into all this, we have to provide certain support systems to, keep, to get, get them a dignified life. And as you all know that uh, the population of the elders is the fastest growing one. And this segment is, I think, is quite a neglected one. So, I started with providing medical care, comprehensive medical care at the doorstep of the elderly. That's how the whole thing started. And seeing the plight, is not, it was not only the health which was in focus, I also felt that they needed other uh, support. So through that, a trust was started, the Nightingale's Medical Trust. And the support systems which we created is to address each of these problems, like daycare centers for emotional problems, elders' helpline for uh, addressing elder abuse, which is with the police, then there are other areas like the rural where which is neglected. There also we have the rural mobile uh, programs. We have the dementia and the aging problems also. I'll which come to that. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. So, uh, but, uh, uh, Dr. Radha, can any senior citizen in distress hmm? approach you for help? What is the process involved? As I mentioned to you, if it is in distress or abuse, we have a toll-free number called 1090. Uh, which any of the persons above 60 can come to this f either for the, uh, with a complaint, either a written complaint or an oral complaint. And uh, depending on the type of uh, problems, we try to solve them. It could be legal, it could be cheating, it could be by the children, as you already mentioned, intrafamilial problems, arbitrations, mediations, all this could happen, and counseling. Because also the other thing is because of the globalization, they are not able to fit in the greater lifestyle. So to see that this lifestyle could be managed or meet the intergenerational gap, 1090 could be approached. So 1090. It's a toll-free number. Toll -free number. Anybody can, anything yes, it's in the commissioner's the office, the police commissioner's office. It's a joint project with the police and ourselves. Uh, Dr. Nata, with the help of police, do you also take on those who abuse the elderly? Um, we do not use the police to a great extent except when there is a f physical assault. We also use them when there is mismanaged old age homes, where we find the old age homes are mushrooming and there is not, you know, there is no, uh, what you call as standards of, minimum standards of care. So these type of old age homes, with the police, we are able to see that good, uh, what you call, create good atmosphere for the elderly. Dr. Radha, any interesting case study? Why don't narrate it for the benefit of listeners? In uh, which way? Because there are so many of them. I, really? As I mentioned to you, whether the problems, if if really? I go to say, then every problem you have interesting case. If, and if I talk about the medical part of it, so many of them do, cannot go to the hospitals as the children are away. The, the caretaker or the caregiver or the husband or wife is also old. Traffic woes are there. Sitting in the hospitals is another. Waiting is a problem. So many times I see that they are at they are either uh, prevent, I mean, what you call as neglecting their health. So when I go to their houses, I find that 
the type of service what we give gives a lot of reassurance and really helps the preventive health of the per person. So that way you have one part of it which I said. The other thing is I have seen some mismanaged old age homes wherein we have gone there and seen that the person didn't even have a breakfast. There were places wherein they had paid the, paid the deposit and after three months the person is away. He's run away from that place. So these people with whatever little amount they have paid to him, they're left in the lurch. So we could close this sort of an old age home with the help of the police. So that was a thing which now has created a sort of a, a what you call as a, like a policing for the mismanaged old age homes. So, and there are enough numbers to say, no, especially the... Thank you so much. Yeah.